Hey there, who am I? Not important right now. What is important, you're tuning in to Knicks Digest. Why did Josh Hart decline his player option for the Knicks? Did the refs cost the Knicks a win a couple days ago against the Timberwolves? And unfortunately, we lost a Knicks legend this week. We're gonna cover all that and more on Knicks Digest, just like I said before, which now sounds repetitive. Roll it. Hello everybody, as previously mentioned, you're currently tuned in to Knicks Digest. If you're familiar with the Digest Media brand, then you know you'll be able to tune in for all things Knicks, whether it's game recaps, news, hirings, firings, or free agency pickups, everything will be covered here. I'll be one of your hosts, Judah Loom, longtime Knicks fan, for better or for worse, uh, for the longest amount of time. It's been probably one of the most depressing things in my life, but just like Little Orphan Annie said, the sun will come up tomorrow. And uh, like Glorilla said, that's why I love tomorrow. It's it's looking good for Knicks fans. And uh, it's looking good for this little podcast seeing as I just gave you Little Orphan Annie and Glorilla in one shot off to a rock and start. But I digress. First thing, the refs missed two major calls in the Knicks game against the Wolves. Two plays that showed up on the two minute report in regards to that Knicks and Wolves game that the Knicks ultimately lost. The first call was with 129 remaining. Jaden McDaniel held Julius Randle's arm while he was dribbling the ball. The refs did not call it and it was actually called good defense, but as soon as you look at it in slow motion or you see the picture here, you can see clearly that Jaden did in fact hold Randle's hand, which prevented him from being able to get the ball as he was dribbling behind his back. Immediately following this play, Randall trying to scramble and get the ball, he fouls Jaden Daniels. Knicks are down four, Randall gets the foul called on him, and then the Jaden Daniels, he hits those two free throws, so now the Knicks are down six. It's not the most egregious call, but nonetheless, it's one of the calls that put the Knicks in this predicament, you know? So if Randall is able to maintain possession here, Knicks can possibly score a bucket, and now it's a one possession game. But that's neither here nor there. Let's fast forward to the next one. This one comes with 24 seconds left. Jaden McDaniels, again, he must have paid the refs something off nice to look the other way on these calls. It's Timberwolves possession, 24 seconds left. Knicks now down three and McDaniels doesn't get the offensive foul called on him and the league would ultimately say that there should have been one and I think everybody in Madison Square Garden was would agree and in that moment definitely were letting the lefts know that they missed the call. He fully extended that arm that created some space between him and Jalen Brunson who was playing defense at the time. He missed the shot that he was able to get from that free space he created but the Knicks were unable to secure the rebound. Julius Randle, the ball was in his hands, but ultimately Kyle Anderson came away with it. But again, neither here nor there, because if the correct call is made, offensive foul, Knicks don't have to scramble for a rebound. They get the ball, they're down three points, shoot the three, play it slow, go for the two and play defense again, whatever the case may be. But the point being the Knicks were cheated out of a possession with less than 24 seconds left in the game and it's just unacceptable. Now, my take with the whole two minute report is that, you know, I have mixed feelings about it because it's not like they're saying sorry, they're just acknowledging that they made a mistake. And at the end of the day, what does that really do for you? It doesn't do anything. It's like, yes, we should have won or we should have been given a fair chance, an opportunity to do who knows what, but that's all there is to it. It's just a bunch of hypotheticals after that. Nobody gets a win from it. Nobody gets any money or anything like that from it. You're not going to get any sort of draft picks from, you know, the loss. It's just kind of a, hey, we messed up. Go about your day. So plenty of people, plenty of Knicks fans are going to be like, oh, the Knicks are getting cheated. That's why I disagree. I feel like this is another case where the Knicks play down to their competition. No disrespect to the Timberwolves. I feel like they may even be in the same tier with the Knicks, maybe a shade less, but in that same tier of the with the Knicks as a team that's good with the potential to be better, to be great, to be championship contenders, you know? But in this game, without your big man and cat who's been out all season, without Anthony Edwards, one of my favorite young players in the league, 
This is a game the Knicks should have easily won, and unfortunately, again, they played down to their competition. Torian Prince, listen, he'll probably drop 30 on me and everybody else that's in the rec center. But Torian Prince is not a 30 points a night guy in the NBA. And for whatever reason, the Knicks had him looking like he was a number one draft pick, like he was the next coming of Steph Curry or something like that. Eight of eight from three on the night. And it's like you're a defensive team with a defensive minded coach. No adjustments were made to stop Torian Prince from absolutely lighting you up. Come on, we need better than that. We're supposed to be a championship team. Well, not a championship team. Nobody's saying the Knicks are a championship team, but we're supposed to be building towards that. And these are the little mis little mistakes and mishaps that we can't have. We can't have Torian Prince lighting us up and us as a coaching staff aren't making any adjustments. I think after he was four of four, from three, somebody should have said, hey, let's not let this guy keep shooting threes on us. Yes, I know, easier said than done, but nonetheless, as a defensive team, I would expect that, you know, the Knicks would find a way to prevent that. And then at the end of the game, after, you know, that two minute report, he's the one that kind of, you know, seals the game for the Timberwolves with the game ceiling layup. And, you know, he's talking trash and we, you can't really do anything. All you can do, all you can do at that point is say, we should have had the ball, it should have been this, and it should have been that, but shoulda, coulda, woulda, and didn't, okay? Knicks lost, Knicks should have been better, Knicks should have played better, Knicks came out lethargic again, Knicks should have did a lot of things and didn't, and they lost another game that they should have easily won. We're beyond that, let's go ahead and move on. Josh Hart declining his player option, I don't think you'll find anybody that will say he hasn't been a huge asset for the Knicks ever since they traded for him at the deadline. They're 12 and four since he's been there. And honestly, he's quickly become one of my favorite Knicks players. He's not gonna wow you away in any sense with his scoring or rebounds or basically he's not gonna wow you with stats, right? He's not gonna do anything especially well, but he'll do a lot of things really good and I think He's just a great utility player where he kind of gives you exactly what you need. Uh, point being, he's been a great addition to the Knicks. Obviously, we want to keep him around. And I don't think I don't think there's anybody on that Knicks organization that's going to say differently. So he's declining his fifth year option, not because he doesn't want to be there or he's looking to explore free agency, but he's actually looking to make the Knicks a home for him. In his quote, he actually said, I want bigger things for my wife and myself. Just find a home somewhere where we are valued and really like living there. And I think that can be New York. I would love for it to be New York and hopefully the organization feels the same way. Not to get ahead of myself, but I would wager that the organization definitely feels the same way. Again, Josh has been nothing but a major asset to the Knicks, and he feels like a player that just kind of fits in with what Tom Thibodeau wants to do. He loves those defensive guys who can also get it done on the other side of the court, and that's Josh Hart to a T, someone that's going to give you defense and be able to score offense. He's not going to look to score first, and honestly, that's great because you have a guy like Julius Randle who he's looking to score first. You have even a RJ Barrett. He's thinking, you know, he can be a number one option. So he's often looking to score when he gets that ball in his hand. Hart can score, which again, another great thing about him. Like if you need him to score some points, he has no issues with putting the ball in the basket, but he also pushes that ball when they need him to. He's a more than capable passer. I've seen him on plenty of occasions make some unbelievable passes to put the Knicks in position to get some easy baskets. And again, a defensive guy, you know, he 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 brings it, he brings that energy on defense night in and night out. And he's just one of those guys that you need on a roster that's gonna be able to do everything for you, give you a boost off the bench, and just make you a better team overall. Hopefully the Knicks can get it done and re-sign him. And he is finding himself a home here with the Knicks. That's my take on it. I don't, I haven't heard, I've spoken to a lot of people, I haven't heard anybody say they don't want Hart to come back or they don't think it's a great fit. There's plenty of coaches that are out there who feel like the Knicks got really great value in that trade. Uh, and again, it's, it just speaks on how highly the Knicks think of them because they were, they traded away a first round pick in addition to Cam Reddish, with you, which many people felt like could be a valuable asset to the Knicks. But I feel like Josh Hart has everything 
some Knicks fans thought that Cam Rush was going to be. Uh, and honestly, up to this point, I would say Hart has been better. But again, hopefully they are able to get it done and he can call New York home as a New Yorker myself. You'll love it here, Josh. We'd love to have you here. Please don't go. Please, you know, stay on a team friendly deal. NBA reporter Zach Lowe said on his podcast, I think Emmanuel quickly might be the favorite now to win this award. He has been that good. The Knicks have been way better with quickly on the floor versus off the floor. Brogdon, who is currently the front runner for the Sixth Man of the Year award, Brogdon, the Celtics have been good either way. Defensively and rebounding, quickly is just a menace to society. He just feels to me more centered to the Knicks identity and feel and style than Brogdon does in Boston, more so than Brogdon does in Boston. A side by side comparison, you'll see that Malcolm Brogdon does in fact have the better numbers as far as points, assists, rebounding, and even as far as percentages, you know, from three point and free throw. And it's not listed here, but he does have a little bit better percentage from the field. And honestly, I probably couldn't agree more with what Zach Lowe is saying. It's kind of like the MVP award. It's not going to go to the player that scores the most points on a nightly basis. It's going to go to the player that's most valuable to their team. And I think when you look at it through that lens, even though Brogdon's numbers are a little bit better across the board, quickly has definitely been more valuable to the team than Malcolm Brogdon has been to, to Boston. So without Brogdon, Boston is still going to be Boston. They're still going to have Jason Tatum. They're still going to have Jalen Brown, and they're still going to win a ton of games. I don't think there's really a difference if, you know, Brogdon's out of the lineup. You know, there's, they'll still find a way to be a really good basketball team that's in contention for a championship. Whereas the Knicks, without Quickly, they may possibly still win a game, but they are definitely not the same team. Quickly being the first guy off the bench actually gets more minutes than RJ on some nights. Gets definitely every night, I would say, gets more minutes than Quentin Grimes, you know? So that just goes to show how important and pivotal he is for the Knicks. And I'll take it a step further and just point to when Jalen Brunson was out a couple games with his foot injury and it was quickly that stepped in for the one game, had a career night and pretty much electrified the garden and helped the Knicks win an important game versus none other than the Boston Celtics. And that's just a small example, a small sample of what quickly has been able to do for the Knicks this season. He came out kind of weak, wasn't necessarily the best guy. He was uh, at the start of the season, he was kind of in a shooting slump. His numbers were down, uh, but he found something. I guess once Tom Thibodeau kind of rearranged his rotation and quickly was able to get a couple more minutes, we see that quickly definitely got into more of a groove. He's able to play a little bit more freely. And the thing I like most about him, he's out there every night just kind of having fun and giving you everything he's got. You can tell that, you know, he's given 100% energy, 100% effort, the things that, you know, you can't get coached on like and it's there and even though Brogdon is still in the lead for that right now I definitely feel like Zach Lowe makes a great case and unfortunately we do have a bit of bad news rest in peace to the captain unfortunately Willis Reed has passed away this week for the much of the last year he's been battling with congestive heart problems and he has passed away at the age of 80 it's undeniable the accolades are undeniable from this man 1965 rookie of the year seven time all-star five times all nba and he played all 10 of his seasons with the knicks he'll forever be a knicks legend after bringing two championships to the team and in one of those championships he stamped himself as an all-time knicks legend it was game seven in the 1970s finals against the lakers and Reed, with a torn muscle in his leg, limped out onto the court, hits his first two shots, and gives New York the emotional boost that they needed and catapulted them to a victory and a championship. In addition to that, Reed is one of three players to win the All-Star Game MVP, regular season MVP, 
and the finals MVP in the same season. The other players being Michael Jordan, who did it twice, and Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, so obviously he's the only Nick that did it, but one of three players to have ever done it. Just an unbelievable guy, a champion, an ambassador for the Knicks. You just hate to see him go, but nonetheless, we thank him for all he's done for Knicks Nation and may he forever rest in peace. That being said, thank you guys for watching. Please, please, please subscribe. Hit the comments section. Hit me with a like. Let me know what you agreed with, what you didn't agree with, what I got wrong, what I got right, whatever the case may be. I appreciate you for watching. Tune in. I'll be uh, recapping the Knicks game versus the Heat tonight. But for now, this has been Knicks Digest. See you guys next time.